for sure. Well, how have you, well, but how that doesn't make sense to me because you lead a $20 billion software company that, and you've been doing it for 20 years, like, and as a CTO, so like sh how on earth do you pull that off? And it's public, it's publicly traded, which means you've got to go through all the bullshit that like is the opposite of creativity. Yeah. How do you, how do, well, how well, like, do you, well, like one thing you shared last time, you, you talked about those little like kind of calculators or the little like kind of growth, growth tools that you had built, which was just like, oh, I was just tinkering and I made this little like page load speed test site and then, or whatever. Yeah. I don't remember the exact examples, yeah. but you had built like three or four of those that drove like a substantial amount of traffic for HubSpot early on. And like, even now with wordplay, like, you know, you're just, you're still creating stuff even now that yeah, like, but we were just talking, we were just talking, he's getting ready for the earnings call. And like that to me is the opposite of creativity. You know what I mean? That's like you're you have so many you have such a narrow lane that you could stay within. That's like it seems so hard. Yeah. So I'll, I'll say this. Um, I have done everything in my uh, in my power to reduce the time I have to spend on things that I'm not good at. Right. Which is the uh, things that are kind of non creative, not a part of that. So I don't have any direct reports, which is unheard of for a company that is, you know, for a founder that has. Uh, 7,000 people in the company, a lot of them on the kind of product and engineering team, which presumably um, you know, the CTO would kind of help manage and lead. I, I don't do that. Um, and so and the only meetings I go to are where there's some creativity involved. I don't like to go to kind of status things and updates or whatever. It's like I can read an email as well as the next person. Um, <laughs> so, but, yeah, but there are things that are non-delegatable that um, one of we should, we should probably talk about. It's, it's on my list of things. Uh, so one is earnings calls. Um, another one is getting onto public stages, right? So for instance, we have an annual conference called Inbound that, you know, the last time it was in person it had like 25,000 people in the live event, right? Like it's, um, it's big and I have to give the keynote every year and I've been doing it for 10 plus years now, which I hate and I'm bad at, uh, but that was one of those, because I'm founder, that was one of those non-delegatable things, right? I couldn't say, oh, well, we're gonna have someone else go do that because, you know, in my role as founder, I have a certain kind of weight to me just by virtue of the title um, of, of being a founder versus um, someone else. So, Sean, I, listen to this. Listen to this Darmesh story. And Darmesh, you could fill in the blanks as we go because you could decide how much you want to reveal. But there has been a couple different times, maybe three different times, I've introduced Darmesh to a founder of a company who was raising money. And literally within five minutes, he replied and said, I looked at the deck. I'm in for blank amount. He, he, Dimash, you could reveal if you want to say some of the some of the times how much it was. But uh, and he replied with, "I'm in." Just so you know, though, I've got one rule, which is I always side with the founder, um, and I'm always on your team. But the downside of that is like I'm gonna make close to no time. You didn't say it this way, but it's like I'm gonna make close to no time for you, or like you know, like I think you said it. Like I'm totally gonna be silent, a silent partner. I'm not gonna bother you, which means if you want to bother me, I probably you know, I'm not going to talk to you that much, but that's like the stipulations for taking my money. If you want to take it, great, do it. I've seen yeah. that happen three different times. And do you want to reveal how much it was or no? Uh, I, I don't recall, but um, I will say this. I've made roughly, I think, a little over 100 investments now across my angel investment. Um, I won't call it a career, but my activities and 80 to 90 percent. Um, I've never actually talked to the founders or ever met with them um, <laughs> over a vast majority of my deals, I make the decision within 24 hours. Um, it's like, like, I don't have time to go dig into do due diligence on some industry or whatever. It's like, that's not the point. My point is not that there's only two reasons I do angel investing. Um, and it's, and none of, neither of them are to make a return. Um, one of them is around living vicariously through other entrepreneurs. I just like, I like that process. Um, and this is, you know, the predates even starting HubSpot. And the other one, uh, quite immodestly is just bragging rights. Is to be able to say five, 10, 15 years from now. It's like, because no one cares like how much you invest, whatever. It's like, oh yeah, I was in Okta back in the day. I was in Stack Overflow back in the day. I was like, you know, first money on this company, this company, this company. Uh, and that feels nice. It's uh, it's not such a kind of magnanimous giving back to the community. It's purely it's like, oh, it'd be cool to be able to have been part of, you know, these great founding teams that went off and built great companies. I really respect that you said that part because I thought you were going to say, like, um, you know, to support like the causes founders. I care about. Yeah. yeah, I just, you know, just to foster entrepreneurship <laughs> or like, you know, you know, use the D word, democratize something, something. And instead, you said a true thing that I, I think every angel investor feels is like, it's awesome to have a notch on your belt and be like, yeah, I, 
I, I either I saw that or I backed that. I bet on that and it, and it worked out. And it's awesome. It's an awesome feeling. It is a perk of the job and it's a real one. So uh, the fact that you said that to me shows me that you are a real one, Darmesh. I'm, I'm, I'm what I refer to myself as like a warm hearted, red blooded capitalist. Right. So I have compassion. <laughs> it's not like that. I don't like people. I'm not a sociopath, um, but I I'm a capitalist. It's like, OK, well, for instance, I'm, this is going to sound completely immodest, but uh, we opened this door in the last episode, so might as well walk through it now. Is So last episode, we talked about kind of putting a value on your time, whatever it happens to be. And that anything that falls below the line in terms of you can outsource a delegate or whatever for less than that, you don't do those things, right? You don't mow your lawn, whatever. If, um, and so I haven't, uh, I should recalibrate, but you know, my number personally, the one I use just because the math is easier, is like $10,000 an hour. Like that's what I, if I were on the open market, I think I could, I could make that if that's what I'll. Dude, I, I, I would have thought forward. higher. I would have thought higher. It is higher. It's like it's, um, <laughs> well, what do you that think? That was the it's, number. It's, it's, it's higher. No, um, but I think, I, I think it would be like 50 or 100,000 an hour, maybe. Like, I mean, way higher. One could make the case, but I can make my point without having to make that particular case. Well, well, okay, so, uh, let me ask you a question yeah. it, to make it real. So uh, you buy something, you, you book a plane ticket, it, like whatever, you, it didn't work out or you, you deserve a refund, but you'd have to go chase it down. Do you just have somebody who you're like, this is my chief of staff, my EA that like, I just say you do it. Or you're like, Hey, it was $2,000, but it's below my early rate. I'm not going to do it. I just eat the loss and move on. I don't do it because even delegating then requires some follow-up requires some explanation. And they're going to apologize because they could only get half back or it was only a credit. It's like, I don't, I don't care. I just honestly right. don't care. Um, and so, and back to the investment thing, so let's say, you know, my when I started, my average investment rate was, we'll call it $100,000, uh, give or take a little bit. Um, it's grown considerably since then. But if I spent like five hours doing due diligence or having founder meetings or whatever, I basically doubled their valuation or halved my <laughs> investment amount, right? Because like, not only did I put cash in, for which I'm going to get shares, but then I put another $50,000 or $100,000 worth of time in just in the due diligence, which is easy to kind of run up that bill. It makes no mathematical sense why people would do that, right? It's like, okay, um, do you really feel like you're going to? And the reason they rationalize, and this makes sense, is that if you really believe that as a result of spending that time on the margin, you're going to make better investment decisions. You're going to pick better companies. You're going to do these things. And maybe for the first hour or two, in an early stage startup, there's just not that much diligence to do, right? Like, what are you going to dig into? It's like, you right. like well, the idea or you don't. You like the founders or you don't. Move on. For the, the other part that's ob obvious but worth saying out loud just in case people are like, well, then why are you doing this podcast? Well, you also just do things you like. And th you, those are the things that you don't do. You don't put a, a dollar amount on because you enjoy them. And therefore, it is not a cost to you. It is like a, a, you know, a benefit to you. So. So, yeah, if you love gardening, then you garden. Like, you don't put a $10,000 an hour mark on it. Is that fair for you? That's how I think about it, at least. That is fair. And so what I solve for is I'd like to solve for, it's, kind of, it's a little bit of a squishy term, is just raw impact. I like scale. So if you folks were a much smaller blog, let's just say, it's like, oh, I'm going to reach 50 people as a result of this. And I have ideas that I think are worth sharing. Um, and it was smaller. I'm like, and, and, and it's not like, oh, I don't get up out of bed in the morning unless there's at least, you know, 10,000 people. Yeah. Like, if, if this was Morning Brews like, podcast, then I'm we're, we're not, we're not doing like, it. Amplify, <laughs> amplify my time, right, to what little time I have left on the planet, what things that I know. Um, so I'm always looking for uh, th to do things at scale. Like, how so, can I find a way? 